Hey guys, <laughs> this is gonna be a little weird because I'm trying to keep my camera pointed to the desk so you can see what I'm doing real close. Um, but tonight, I'm gonna show you how to make an awareness ribbon, okay? And you can do this in any color you want. I'm just using orange as a guide because this is a color that I used on the last job. But for this job, I'm gonna do it in light blue. So I'm gonna get down so you won't be able to see me, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so first we are gonna wanna turn our board the right way. So look at your board and look at the lines and make sure that they're going vertical, okay? So you wanna make sure they're going vertical so that when you stake it, you're staking it from the bottom. So ours is vertical, I'm gonna put it down here. We're going to need our Husky X-Acto knife, a marker, frog tape, I like the wide one, the thick one, a picture to draw from, pencil, tape pencil, you went over this in the last video, <laughs> okay, and what else, there's something else, oh, a ruler, do you see the metal ruler over there? Okay, and a straight edge like a little ruler. Okay, so we're gonna start. This is the tape, and I'm gonna stretch it out, and I'm gonna start at the bottom. So I'm gonna tape this down. And then we're just gonna fold these edges down. There's a little edge there, but that's okay. There, that's okay. All right, got that. Next, ruler. Okay, now we're gonna mark our top and bottom. Boots are going this way. Ooh, that's good. Let me mark this the top. Top. So, now what we're gonna do is this is all taped now. I'm gonna take this to um, my husband and he's gonna draw this on there for me. And then we'll be back. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to tape this down because um, I want to get closer with the camera so you guys can see uh, how I cut the line so okay so this is after my husband has drawn it onto the, the tape board so this is a picture that he drew it from and as you can see it looks a little different and that's because um, I like the ribbon but I wanted it just to stand out a little more so I wanted to add a little border around it so that's what these extra lines that you see are here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mark the sections that are the color that I'm going to paint so that I don't get confused when it's time to peel this tape off because once you start cutting lines and peeling it's easy to peel up the wrong thing so what I'm going to do I know that these big pieces here are going to be blue so this is blue this is blue Let's see how it's this color here this is going to be blue and down here is going to be blue. And then this little skinny line that's running in here, all of that's gonna be blue. 
So I'll just put a little B there, a little B there. And I know that skinny line is all blue. So anything that doesn't have a letter on it, I know that's going to be white. So I'm not gonna put anything there. And that tells me that that tape does not need to get pulled up. So because this is just a one color, I'm only using one color, um, it's gonna make this a lot easier. It's gonna go faster. So let's get started. husky pepto knife and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut let me show you guys all right so this is the top of my board right and the way the tape get in there. the way the tape was put on we put this one on first this one on second and you know like up the board that way so that means that the tape goes smooth when you run your fingers this way so it's smoother this way and I call against the grain this way. So when I cut, I don't wanna cut against the grain. I wanna go the direction of the tape. So I wanna go where it's gonna be smooth. So I'm gonna cut this way. So with that, with that being said, I'm gonna turn my board around like this, and then I'm gonna cut down, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I don't know if you can see me or not. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. Remember, these are our borders that go all the way around, so we don't have to worry about that so much. Um, but I'll just stay on the lines to make it easy. So we're gonna cut right here, starting with the parts that we're gonna cut out. So I'm gonna start here, go down. And my husband likes to use thick draw lines Sometimes it's hard for me to follow that, but um, I just usually go, whoa, I'm off a little bit. I just usually go around that line. And then um, this line here that I'm going on the outside, I'll follow that back up here because I still want to cut down. So I'm going to come up here and then I'll meet that line that I was just cutting at. Oops, sorry. And, you know, this is my first time doing the tutorial video. A lot different without Rennick here. Rennick! <laughs> All right, and then what I do is I kind of slow down here and I look for that line that I started with or that I left off from. And there it is, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to this side and then I'm gonna cut this side. And again, I'd normally be listening to some music. I don't want you guys to hear me. So that's the inside strip. Well, we gotta go this side here. And I'm going to cut the opposite direction only because I don't want to lift the tip of my knife up. But what happens when you go against the grain, the chances of you leaving um, the little remnants where the tape overlaps are greater. So that's why it's always a good way to go the one direction with the way you taped. Um, it makes it better. Oh, where were we? I think we were right here. And I'm slightly off that line, but again, you don't have to be super, super perfect. The closer you are um, to the lines, the better. But sometimes when I'm going fast, I'll 
get off the line by mistake, not intentional. All right, so I think that's all of my lines for this orange here. The stripes that go all the way around. Yes. So now I'm gonna cut out the big parts. I'm just trying to stay on these lines as best I can. Whoa. I got off there. That might look a little weird, but we're gonna see, we're gonna keep going. All right, so let's do this one. I'm gonna turn my board just a little bit. And then again, you don't want to put too, too much pressure on it. You know, just enough to where um, the tip of the blade is kind of going in a little bit. You are going to cut into the chloroplast and that's okay. Um, you just don't want it to be too, too deep. That's all. So let's cut this one out. And then we're also going to cut this one out. Okay, so now I think I've hit all of my cut lines um, on here. I know that this is gonna be black, this is gonna be white, this is going to be, um, I'm sorry, not black, orange, white, or blue, white, <laughs> blue, white, blue, white. So this part that's on the outside, this outer line, um, because that's a, that's a white line, um, he just drew that uh, just for reference for me. But I'm not going to trace that line because this orange right here is gonna be the last um, color that I'm gonna see on my card. So whatever the last color is, you know you're gonna put a border around your image. So I'll just use that as a rough guide. You know, like once I peel off all the tape and spray it, and then when it's time to trim it off the board, I'll just, um, I'll, I'll just eyeball it and cut around it. Okay, so let's start peeling off the tape. And we are gonna go this way down. So let's start here, if you guys can see. Okay, so let's start here and pick up a piece of it. All right, so I know this is going to be one of the blue areas that I'm gonna paint. So we'll start here and then we'll just peel down. And see the importance of taping the one direction overlapping when you layer the tape. It's just so much easier to come off. That's way easy. Alright, so here. And then here on these these points. These points, you really want to be careful when you start lifting off here because here, if this lifts lifts up and you see it lifting up, you can just put put your the point of your your blade here and then pull back and then it'll lay that that little piece back down for you. Okay, so we're gonna take this little piece off here. So now um, we've got that off. So now we want to take off the other blue parts. So we'll go back up here. And we'll put 
どうですか Okay. We do the same thing here. Anywhere where there's blue. Okay, now remember this part, don't get confused because we're going to leave that get in the camera. white. So we don't want to we don't want to cut this out and that's why there's nothing there. So we want to leave that here. Okay. And then we are going to finish peeling off. Now, what I did learn, I don't know if you guys, this is a lot of tape that's coming off, right? So what I have learned to do is when it comes off like this in these big pieces like this, um, instead of me wasting that tape like that, I will get another board. Um, usually it's a scrap piece of board that I've uh, already used or cut. Like this one is like missing a chunk out of it but I know it's large enough that I can draw something on it. So I'll uh, take my spray, there it is. Well, just for this exercise, because I don't want to waste time while I'm filming. Um, but I would spray this first, you know, get all of the spray off with the Windex. And then I'll just take this and the direction that the tape is taped on, you know, it's the same way that I would put it on here. So if I have the tape and it's taped this way, I'll start over here and I'll try to still keep it horizontal okay because that would still be, be taken that way but then I'll just reuse this tape <laughs> okay and that's what I do with the really big parts okay so that's just that and the same thing with this guy Okay, and then I'll just use like tape, you know, little scraps or whatever and cover this guy up. Just so I'm, told you I'm frugal. I don't like to waste anything if I don't have to. Okay, so this is where we are now. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go take this outside and I'm gonna go spray paint it. And then I will spray paint it with a light coat and then I'm gonna bring it back in so you guys can see what I mean by a light coat and then we'll let it dry for about 10 minutes and then we'll spray it again. And then I'll let you guys see the difference. So be back in a minute. Okay, so we are back and this is what a light coat is. Um, you can tell in some spots, like say here, that's darker, um, it's a little lighter over there. But ideally it's just, you know, a quick spray with the paint. You just wanna put, um, a nice little powder coating on it give that a chance to dry and adhere so that the next layers that you paint on it'll stick to that um, what happens when you spray or try to, to, to do full coverage over the whole thing is that the paint will collect it'll collect in these little cracks right here and it'll almost like just coat it from this area the white area onto the taped area and when you get ready to peel this tape off, it won't peel on the sharp edges that you have. It'll peel this paint along with the, the paint that's on the green tape. So it'll give you a really jagged um, uh, cut line. And so that's what we don't want. So um, that's what I normally do. I'll do a light coat and then I'll come back and then I'll spray a more solid coat um, on the second one. Uh, rarely do I use a third coat. Um, sometimes on my big pieces, 
um, if I if I you know if I cover and I see that it's just looking uneven I'll go over it with a third coat but usually two coats is all I do so I'm gonna go let this dry it needs to dry for about uh, eight more minutes and then we'll spray it again and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like okay so I brought the camera outside because um, I wanted to show you what it kind of looks like or what you can expect to see when you're spray painting it um, I hope I don't get this on my camera so I'm gonna go this way because the wind's slightly blowing this way and ooh, I already got paint on the grass ah! I'm gonna get flogged with a wet noodle for that one all right sorry dad all right so we're gonna try to cover up this grass a little bit That's better. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm going to start here and I'm going to work my way down. So I'm about maybe six inches away. And make sure you shake your paint up for a good minute or two before you start spraying. Oh, and I hate the bugs. Get off. Get off, dude. Ah, really? Really? Oh my gosh. Alright, so just cover that up really good. usually what I do. So we'll let that dry and come back. Okay, I don't know what it is about the bugs and the spray paint, and but I always have this issue. Um, they'll just want to come make their little debut. And I hate it. Let's see. Look right there is one. So I'm gonna go touch that up. Hopefully that'll cover that up. Okay, so we're back and it's been about 20 minutes and this is dried. Um, I got paint on my hands, but I don't know if you can see. Well, let's do my pinky finger. There's nothing on that one. Um, but I'm just gonna ch check this. I always test the tape part of the, the um, piece. I never touch the actual piece that I want the color on, only in case it's still wet. I don't want fingerprints or anything ruined on the on the final uh, image. So at this point, I'm gonna stop real quick. I'm gonna go get the cutting board because I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and you guys can see. Normally, I can look at my piece and I can see the edge here, like where the cut lines are. And I'll just eyeball right around that line. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to trace around it just so you guys can follow my cut lines a little bit better because everything looks um, blue. So I'm gonna take this marker and I'm just going to trace around where I'm going to cut. Now, remember, we're gonna, we're gonna keep a space, our white border. So whatever the pieces are that you're using in your setup, if it's a quarter inch white on most of the pieces, kind of use that as a guide. If it's a half an inch, or if it's a half an inch, then you want to kind of use that as a guide. I'm just going to um, probably do maybe in between <laughs> a quarter inch and a half inch, um, but I'm just going to use um, the same amount of distance around it. And so let's go ahead and do that. So let's see, can you see it? Yeah. Okay, and so that's what we're gonna do. Remember, this is our guide for that white area. I'm not really gonna draw anything there because I want that to stay white. 
So now what I'm going to do, take my husky knife, exactly this, and then I am going to turn my piece upside down. And I'm just going to, so I'm going to get that in there so you can see. I'm just going to trim. So just go here. And you want to put pressure on this when you're cutting so that you don't have to go back and cut again. Sometimes I can get it cut the first time, um, sometimes not. Sometimes I think that I've cut it, you know, deep enough, but I have to go back. So. Okay. And there you go. All right. So we're just gonna finish cutting this guy out. I keep covering it up so you can't see. There we go. Okay. And it looks like I'm going off the line a little bit, and I am. And that's only because I can see where my or my uh, blue line is here. I'm trying to stay kind of even, but I drew it a little crooked. So that's what that's from. So we're here, we're just gonna keep going. Now curves, curves you wanna take your time especially on these because what happens if you go too fast, your blade will catch one of the fruits and it'll just catch it and you will be wanting to go left, but your knife will go, will go straight and it'll follow it down. So you wanna kind of go slow and keep your pressure and then you'll hear little clicks and pops. It's, it's kind of hard to hear them now, but Sorry, so I'm gonna have a little hiccup right there, but it's okay. All right, now I'm cutting against the grain, but I've been doing this for a while, so I know um, when I'm going around the edges when you're cutting out a piece, like the whole piece, it really doesn't matter if you go with the, the tape or what have you because you're cutting in so deep. It's usually when you're just trimming out to peel off the tape that you kind of want to go the direction of the tape. Keep putting my hands in the way. I gotta put it there. Sorry. Now we've trimmed out everything. We're just gonna pop off the edges. Bam. Here. Bam. And here. Here we go. So that's what it looks like. Whoops. What it looks like now. Okay. These extra pieces right here, I usually cut them here on the end. And then here. I usually toss this little piece of trash that but these pieces here because they're already taped sorry because they're already taped you can draw something on here this could be a pencil um it could be a golf club i mean it could just be anything i like, like i said i hate wasting stuff so these pieces i keep in a bin with other pieces that i've used and i'll recycle those so here we have our cut out piece and the reason I don't cut this out before I spray it is because of the edges. I like all of my pieces to be white in these on the side here. 
um, when you when you trim it before you paint, paint will get here and it doesn't look as pretty when it's set up. From the street, you can't really tell that well, but when the, when the clients get up on your piece, then they'll be able to see it. So we're going to trim this out and it looks like we need to be killing from this direction. Whoop. Yes, this direction. All right, so we're gonna start here. Piece here and a piece here. All right, so we'll pull that off. Okay. And now you can start seeing your your flare come to life a little bit. My daughter loves this part. <laughs> If she was up right now, she'd be asking to do this part. Okay. And so we'll come back here and get this top part. Again, be very careful with your knife. I, I really hate that I got to do a disclosure, but <laughs> you may hurt yourself. I'm sure there's a safer way. Okay, so now we're going to work these pieces and get these off. And again, guys, you know, there could very well be an easier way, and I'm sure there probably is, to doing this. Um, but this is the way that I do it. And if you notice, I'm kind of like dancing around the edges. When this paint gets on your hands and you touch any other part of it, oh my gosh, it's like, okay, extra cleanup. So I try to not put my hands on any place on it that I don't have to, or I try to use the edges. It's starting to come alive. It's starting to come alive. All right. And I'm sorry if I kind of missed the camera a little bit. All right, um, what do we have? We have this up here. And the reason I don't start, let me show you something. Okay, so if you see the tape here, right? This has to get peeled off too, but I never start here in the corners. I always try to start where the edge of a piece has started. And then I'll come back and peel this so that my points in this little area can be really sharp. Okay. And there you have it. That's it. All right. So there's our blue awareness ribbon. And that's something you can totally, totally do. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching.
Okay guys, so now I'm done and I'm just taking like one last little look, you know, and if I look, see here, right here, and this is not a big, it's not a big deal, but I think that that's a little fat right there. So I want to trim that off a little bit. So I'll just come in and I'll just trim this off just a little bit. Yep, much nicer. All right, and the same thing here. It's like this color line. Um, I follow this as my guide, the edge of this, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of going by to to make it look even. All right, everything else looks pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. And that's a wrap.